Hey everyone, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a popper. Not just a regular bass popper, but a frog popper. And not just a regular frog popper, but a frog popper with a little bit of a twist. It's going to look something like this. So it's going to be roughly the shape of a frog. And it'll have frog legs made from fiber that I'll just attach with a little hole and some glue. And of course, a popper face like most any other popper. We're going to do one different thing. We're going to put a dive lip on this thing so that you can pop it, pause it, and then give it a little slow sweep of the rod and it'll waggle down a couple of feet in the water and then pop back out. That should be a pretty nice combination of actions and I think it'll attract a bite. So let's get started. So we're going to make this frog out of wood, not this piece of wood, but I did draw a rough sketch of the silhouette of this lure and I put in some key measurements so that I can use it to measure as I carve, or actually as I turn the lure on the lathe. I just want to shape it on the lathe as closely as I can to what I imagine the frog should look like and then I'll refine it uh, with some hand carving and some sanding and some shaping with the sander. So let's go out to the lathe. What I'm using on this thing is camphor and it has a lot of internal oils so it's a good wood for making lures and it has a pretty low specific gravity in other words it's really light it'll float real easily that means I can add a little bit of weight in there if I need to have it uh, stable in roll so it won't kind of roll out of shape when I go to crank a little bit All right, ran into my first little snag. This wood is all harvested from fallen trees here on my property, so some of them have worm holes. So what I'm gonna do to fix it, I'm just gonna fill it with crazy glue and sawdust and get back to shaping. I'll give it a spritz with some accelerator. All right, there's the repair, super smooth and rock hard. Let's keep going. That's the general shape I want. I'm going to do a little more crazy glue on this thing because I found other soft spots. Man, all right, so I'm having to start over. That piece of wood had so many flaws in it. Every time I tried to shape a little more, I'd find another hole. So I'm starting over with a new piece uh, and it's Cypress this time. And I'll get back to you when I'm back to where I left off. All right. Here's the new one. All right, we're get we're back to where we were before. And the next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of an angle on this face. I want the popper face to be slightly scanted so it overhangs a little bit. I'm going to do that by grinding the bottom part of the lip just a hair. Hopefully not too much. Alright, I think that has a nice little overhang on it. 
Next step is to do a little more hand shaping with some uh, sandpaper. I've got to clean this out a little bit. Still got to do a bunch of sanding, but I'm pretty happy that the popper mouth came out pretty nice. The little details are pretty good. It's hard to see with this grain. This grain is making me cross-eyed. I'm having a hard time kind of eyeballing what I've done and what needs to be sanded. But the next step is to cut in the lip slot and I want it not quite a wake bait, not so vertical. You know, typically a, a wake bait, you'll have it between 60 degrees and 90 degrees, but I want this somewhere around 50 degrees. So I'll be eyeballing that. <laughs> So I still have to decide on the uh, bib that I'm going to use. It's probably going to be a pretty small one. And I'm considering using uh, one of those circuit board ones because they're thin, they're already green. Why not? All right, so I've been working on the shape of this new one. Pretty happy, uh, more or less with the shape. Uh, I've got some nice spots where the eyes are going to go. The general profile is going to be pretty nice. It's got a little bit of reduction in the very back. So as I pop it, it'll have room to sort of splash forward without being pushed down too much. I'm going to go ahead and dip it in some polyacrylic, uh, which is just a water-based clear finish that uh, should seal the wood. And then I'll go back and sand it a little more if I need to. So I had first planned just to have a hook eye on the very back and that one alone. But then I thought, you know what, if I only have one, I should probably put it near the head since most of the time fish strike at the head. But then I know that if I miss a fish, I'll blame it on only having one treble hook. So I'm going to go ahead and have two. Just go traditional and have two of them on here. And you might have noticed I came up with a name for it. You guys, if you've been watching the channel, you know I like to name all my lures. So the pop and plunge. I had a bunch more. I had the plop and drop, the croak and crank, the splash and dash, the plop and plow, the splash and swim, the hop and drop, the jump and juke, the soak and stroke, the ribbit and run. And that's why it takes me forever to make a lure. All right, it's the weekend and don't let the sunshine fool you. It's still hurricane season. This is Florida and it's the weekend, so it's gonna rain. We've got uh, Tropical Depression Fred coming, so we should be seeing a bunch of rain. And I went ahead and put a very thin coat of UV resin on this thing, and that should fill in any of the little tiny uh, sanding defects that I often leave. I need to drill holes for the frog legs I'm gonna make out of just fly tying hair and that sort of thing. And I've got to drill out for the tie on eye and the belly eye. So I'll put a little mark right where I wanna drill, just below the center, that little white dot. And I just wanna make sure it's centered up on the belly. All right, so for the holes where I'm gonna actually put the legs in, I usually just drill a pilot hole, what I think the angle should be, and then I try to match it uh, with the drill on the other side. And then I'll step it up to a bigger bit so that I can get plenty of fiber in there. All right, so I'm knocking off the sheen on this finish so that the paint will stick really well. And I'll also go ahead and make up some twist eyes for the uh, hook eyes and for the toe eye. So now I'm going to cut these to size so I can glue them in with some uh, two-part resin. Before I actually glue these in, let me glue 
the dive bib in. And I'll do that with a little bit of UV resin. All right, so what I do is I start off filling in the little gap at the very edge of uh, the cut that I made for it. And I usually give it a, a second or two to sort of drool in there and, and then I'll slowly build it back out so it's even with the outside surface. And then I could just put a little bead right at the point where it enters the body. And it only takes 10 seconds for it to set up. All right, so while that glue sets on those uh, twist eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and make the little uh, frog legs. I'm gonna make them out of a combination of this really fine uh, fly tying hair, silicone rubber, jig skirt material. All right, so first I'm gonna get a tuft of this hair and I need it to be really tight in one spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this uh, UV resin and just kind of slightly saturate the fibers right there not too bad and then I'll take it and I'll twist it so it forms a really small diameter I think you can see that I hope and then I'll take it over to my UV light and just have that set I have a nice hard little narrow portion there that I can work with real easily and I'll just snip it off and you see that makes it real easy to get it into that hole but it also makes it real easy to take this uh, silicone skirt piece and tie it on to that nice rigid piece of uh, fiber. And I'll just take a little bit of fly tying line and put a nice tight wrap. And I'll finish it with just a little more of the resin as glue. And that makes for a nice little frog leg I hope insert it into the little hole and it just works out perfect you get a nice set of legs super simple to do in the end I just put a couple of drops of super glue or more of that UV resin and they're glued in all right let's go ahead and start painting I'm gonna just do a really simple frog pattern maybe a little bit like a leopard frog. We'll see.
All right, what do you think? Kind of a matching copper yellow, a bright froggy green. How about a really deep green? How about a holographic gold green? I'm gonna go with the matching eye. I think that's gonna look pretty cool. Now for the mid coat and we'll be ready to clear coat this thing. Okay, Google, what time is it? It's 4.17 p.m. Right now it's not raining. We might be able to get a clear coat on it and do a sundown session with this frog. Let's give it a shot. All right, so now it's just a matter of waiting and hoping the weather holds. It's kind of sunny out right now, which I'm surprised, but there are some squall lines coming through. So even if we go, it's going to be a little dicey. All right, so our little weather window sort of closed on us. So we'll have to push the fishing back to first thing in the morning, hopefully right at sunrise. There's usually a, light, a lot less chance of an actual storm. So we'll try to hit it then. In the meantime, let's see how this thing tur turned out. It actually looks pretty nice. So let's go ahead and put the uh, legs on and that should complete the look. We're down here in between storms and I've got my eye on a really huge gator. It's on top of the dilapidated dock right over there. That's a 10 footer over there. That's a problem. Probably gonna have to get somebody to relocate that thing. I'm probably not gonna get a chance to fish, but we'll put it in the water and see if I can't get some water shots. The lure floats a little lower than I would want it normally. Uh, so that just means the wood was a little too dense. So I need to use a lighter material or I need to make it a bulkier lure. I can get a good pop out of it. And if I do it gently, it'll walk the dog pretty easily. It's sort of subsurface waking, it'll go down about six inches. But you can see it has a very subtle wiggle. All right, well, I think I could probably get a bigger pop out of this thing if I had made the popping face a little bigger and the dive lip just a little smaller. That's the way design works, right? Iterations, you've got to try to see what works and then adapt. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video and the next build.